when I get tired of the raw politics of the day, I assume y'all have really got to be tired of it because I do it for a living. And it takes a while for me to go worn out on stuff. But I'm just kind of worn out on uh, the, the us versus them, left versus right, Democrat versus Republican, uh, signal chat or not kind of narrative that's out there right now. It, it gets exhausting. And there's plenty of other news out there that I think oftentimes we forget about because so much of conservative talk radio and, and even the news these days is programmed to be R versus D where there's actually a lot of other expansive news out there, including really good news. And this also gets to one of my things that I say regularly on, on the air that we should probably brand and put on merch. Events change things. Events change things. Harold Macmillan was uh, our, allegedly Queen Elizabeth's favorite prime minister after Winston Churchill, uh, allegedly because he was very much a gossip, and they they would spend a lot of time gossiping about people. If you ever watch the show The Crown on Netflix, uh, he had a very troubled marriage, and he would spend a lot of time with the Queen. They would gossip about high society. Uh, he was a conservative, and he was uh, encountered by a young journalist who asked him, uh, what was the thing he fretted about the most? And Harold McMillan said, events, dear boy, events, because events change things. And very often we think about events changing things for the worst. And there are geopolitical events in the world today that will change things for the worst. But there are other events in the world that make the world a better place. And I just want to dwell on one. It caught my eye in the journal Nature, and it actually is a very big deal because you're probably aware of a growing international concern that a lot of antibiotics are becoming uh, ineffective. There are bacteria that are uh, becoming immune to antibiotics. They're resistant to antibiotics. And a lot of the synthetic antibiotics that are being designed that are very powerful can just do a number on people's systems. A Cipro is uh, very famously a very powerful antibiotic that can make you very sick while fighting infection. Most of you know my wife takes a daily chemo pill for her stage 4 lung cancer. She had her scans on Tuesday. Her tumors are stable. So they can't get rid of them, but they can stop them from growing. We're almost nine years now of her being on a medicine called Tegriso that's supposed to last for two years. Almost nine years in, medicine's still working. She's going for scans now every four months. Uh, was every three months, now every four months. And my wife can get very sick. Her, her immune system is a bit suppressed. And there have been a couple times she's had to be on Cipro for infections, and it makes her very sick. It tears up her stomach. She has all sorts of side effect problems from it. It'll get rid of the infection, but she's miserable while she's on it. And a lot of uh, infections these days are increasingly drug-resistant, increasingly antibiotic-resistant. Um, very notably, there are increasing numbers of stories about sexually transmitted diseases that used to be pretty treatable, uh, chlamydia, syphilis, and the like, that apparently are increasingly hard to get rid of, that have become very drug-resistant, um, which is just another reason to not fool around before marriage and don't cheat on your spouse. But scientists have been very concerned about this growing trend. Well, let me just read you this from, from Nature. Researchers have discovered a new antibiotic molecule that targets a broad range of disease-causing bacteria, even strains resistant to commercial drugs, and this bacteria, er, this antibiotic molecule from bacteria is non-toxic to human cells. The molecule, this is the part that blows my mind, the molecule was found in soil samples collected from a laboratory technician's garden. The discovery shows that there is terrifically interesting stuff hiding in plain sight, says Kim Lewis, a microbiologist at Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts, who was not involved in the research. Kudos to them that they knew what to look for, she says. The latest molecule targets bacteria's protein-making factory, the ribosome, in a way that other antibiotic drugs don't. The ribosome is an attractive antibiotic target because bacteria don't easily develop resistance to drugs targeting the structure. The search for new antibiotics is necessary because bacteria acquire resistance to existing drugs with continued use. In 2021, bacterial resistance to antimicrobial drugs 
was associated with 1.1 million deaths globally, a figure that could increase to 1.9 million deaths by 2050. The antibiotic resistance crisis is an existential threat to medicine, says Gary Wright, a chemical biologist at McMaster University in Hamilton, Canada, and co-author of the study, which is published in Nature. Wright and his colleagues set out to find microbes that have developed previously unknown tricks to kill pathogens. They collected soil samples in peach tree dishes with growth medium and stored them for a year. The researchers then exposed the microbes from the samples to E. coli, a common gut bacteria that can cause serious disease. One sample showed potent antibacterial activity by a species belonging to the genus uh, Panabacillus. Further rounds of screening, genome sequencing, and structural analysis reveal that the bacteria produce a molecule that belongs to a group of peptides that form a lasso-shaped knot. The peptides are known for being robust and can probably even survive being digested. It's nice, really compact, and an incredibly robust structure. Now, I realize you're listening to a political news talk program, but this is actually massive news and benefits every single person listening. Science is beginning to struggle in the modern era because there have been so many advances and so many wonder drugs have been made, but diseases are finding ways around a lot of biotics, and it's going to cause a health crisis in countries that will invade our political space. As uh, Take, for example, in a lot of immigrant communities in the United States now, particularly uh, where illegal, illegal aliens have taken up, uh, there are uh, tuberculosis problems. Uh, those of you listening out in Kansas City, for example, you all know that uh, in your area there's been a big tuberculosis outbreak in immigrant populations, and some of the tuberculosis is drug-resistant at this point, and it's becoming hard to contain. Uh, in Texas, you know, you've got the, the measles outbreaks. Now, that's uh, not an uh, antibiotic issue. That's a, an issue with vaccines and deep distrust growing in vaccines. But these things are cropping up in immigrant communities in the country, and they're starting to spread. And here in someone's backyard, scientists have found a molecule that kills bacteria and does not hurt human beings. Oftentimes what you find are these sorts of molecules and molecular compounds that will kill bacteria, but they'll also hurt human beings. And you got to figure out a way to refine them to see, is there a way for them to become an antibiotic without also killing the people who are taking them? And in many, many, many cases, these discoveries, you find there's no way to separate the one from the other to make it so it's an antibiotic that isn't fatal to humans. This one naturally occurring is not fatal to human beings. It actually doesn't bother us at all. This is good news. Science continues to make progress. Now, while this is happening, interestingly enough, there is also an undercurrent of deep distrust in science growing. Look at the, uh, the measles situation. It's spread now from Texas to Oklahoma and Kansas and also New Mexico. Um, the, one child is dead. Uh, another has been in intensive care in Kansas. And, the, you know, they interviewed a parent of, of a kid who died of measles recently from a Mennonite community, and they're like, no, we wouldn't. We, we, it was terrible. It was tragic, but they didn't suffer. And, and there are religious concerns, and I get it, and I'm not going to belittle someone who, for their religion, refuses to take a medicine. But there are a lot of people who have suddenly become resistant to vaccines, in large part because of what experts did with COVID. And the, these deep-seated fears, you know, Robert Kennedy has now hired a guy who has already claimed that vaccines cause autism to research whether vaccines cause autism. Uh, we are headed into another dark ages where people forget the things that work. So uh, Philip and Charlie keep telling me if I ever write another book, it needs to be we already know what works. And one of the things we already know that works is modern medicine. Big Pharma gets a very bad rap. I am a big fan of Big Pharma because Big Pharma keeps my wife alive. They invented this medicine that keeps her body from producing a protein that her body um, tr metastasizes in her lungs as lung cancer. I'm a big fan of big pharma. The pharmaceutical industry in America has saved so many lives. Are there problems? Sure, there are problems. A lot of the problems, though, people complain about are actually insurance-related problems, not the pharmaceutical company problems. 
but they continue to innovate. We have a real problem. 1.9 million people by 2050 are going to die because antibiotics have stopped working. In 2021, 1.1 million people died globally because antibiotics stopped working. And now when you're saying, well, Eric said there are 8 billion people on the planet, that's not a whole lot. You're using the same logic as the left when it comes to doge cuts. That is, well, $1 million, we're 35 trillion in the hole. That's not a lot. Uh, but every dollar counts and every life saved is a life saved and saving lives is a good thing. And here we now have a situation where we've got new medicines. Events change things. Oftentimes we dwell on events changing for the worst. We should spend a little time here and dwell on an event that is changing things for the good. Researchers finding a molecule in someone's garden that kills bacteria without killing us. Modern medicine is an amazing thing. I think of the people today who are alive who 10 years ago would be dead, but for the advances of modern medicine. The number of people today who can be treated uh, as chronic illness patients with various types of cancers who 10 years ago would be dead. Medicine is a good thing. Progress is a good thing. Science is a good thing. Our experts sometimes get too arrogant and they breed distrust. They foster distrust. They make people be skeptics. But also a lot of the people who are the most skeptical are people who don't understand they don't know what they're talking about. And we have to balance that. We have to draw lines around that. We, we've got to be careful with that in the parameters. But I got to say, you're looking at a news story that hit the wires this morning that has the profound ability to save a lot of lives over the next couple of decades. So while we worry and we fret about things in Washington or things globally, you just got to remember that for all the events that can change things for the negative, there are events happening every day that will chart a smooth course through history for us. And this is one of them, finding a molecule in someone's backyard that's going to offset all the antibiotics that are no longer working in the world. Modern science, medicine, pharmaceuticals, and the like working together benefiting all of us, we should at least be appreciative of the fact that in the world today, as much chaos as there is, there are a lot of people researching to make our lives better, and they've just found something that's going to do that.